For every 1% performance uplift, if you also spend 1% more money, that ruins the part where it's cool. It's no longer cool. It doesn't actually produce a meaningful step for consumers where they feel like the industry or the amount that they get for their money is increasing. Today, we're talking about the RTX 4080. Launch day is finally here. All the big tech YouTubers have gotten their free copies of the card and Thankfully, we still have unbiased reviewers like Gamers Nexus to tell us really what to expect out of the card. I'm not saying he's the only one, but anyway, I digress. If you've looked at my channel recently, you might think I'm an NVIDIA hater and an AMD fanboy, but that's actually not true at all. I absolutely loved the RTX 3080. In fact, when the 3080 was first announced, I could not wait to get my hands on one of those cards. But just like everyone else, I showed up on launch day expecting to pay $699 MSRP for the Founders card. And of course, I was not able to get one. All the 3080s were botted and scalped, and then there was a shortage and all that crap. You, you know the story, right? Now, why was the 3080 so coveted? Well, because you essentially were not paying anything extra. It was the exact same price as the previous generation 80 series cards, but you had a substantial performance increase. I mean, the 3080 compared to the 2080 was a true generational leap. The 3080 was an entire resolution tier ahead of the 2080. And on top of that, it was significantly outperforming the 2080 Ti for five hundred dollars less that is why the 3080 was so coveted and so sought after by the way i have a 3080 in my pc right now i am not currently using an amd gpu but on december the 13th that will change now let's talk about this why is the 4080 so overpriced well yeah the performance uplift is nice don't get me wrong but it's not nice for the amount of money nvidia is asking for Couple of things you need to keep in mind here. Number one, the $1,200 MSRP of the card is literally for the Founders card and the crappy AIB models. And if you want a good AIB model, this card is going up to $1,400, $1,500 in some cases. And at that price point, you might as well go ahead and buy a 4090. The 4080 at $1,200 literally makes no sense at all. And to make matters even worse, if you go to Hardware Unbox's channel and you look at his 13 game average at 4K, you will clearly see the 4080 is only about 30% faster on average at 4K when compared to the AMD Radeon 6950 XT. And if you compare it to the 3090 Ti, it's even worse than that. Now, the reason why this is such a bad performance uplift right here is because of the money. $1,200. If you go to Newegg right now, you can buy an AMD Radeon 6950 XT for $779 right now. So is $420 on the low end really worth 30% performance increase? I, I don't know. I, I don't think it is. I really don't. Now look, I understand there's a big elephant in the room here, and that is ray tracing. Yes, NVIDIA is better at ray tracing, and I know a lot of you care about ray tracing, ray tracing is the future, AMD is still a generation behind and all that stuff, but I wanna put a couple of things in perspective here. The 7900 XTX is not meant to go against the 4090, it's meant to go against the 4080. And if we start looking at some of the benchmark results for ray tracing without any kind of upscaling support whatsoever for the 4080, you might see that the 4080 is not all that impressive at ray tracing. Check this out. Okay, so looking at a chart from TechSpot, which is essentially hardware unboxed, we can see that the 4080 with the Ray Tracing Ultra preset in Cyberpunk at 4K with no DLSS support only averages 31 FPS. And with DLSS quality, it only goes up to 58 FPS. So it's not even able to hit 60 FPS with the support of DLSS quality while doing ray tracing. And if we switch over to Dying Light 2, we can see that at 4K with the Ray Tracing Ultra preset, the 4080 is only able to average 39 FPS. With the support of DLSS quality, it can raise up to 70 FPS, so that's a little bit better. Okay, if we look above on the chart at the 4090, and if we look at the ray tracing results, we can see that without DLSS, the 4090 is almost able to hit 60 FPS without any kind of DLSS support. It comes in at 58 FPS. But with the DLSS support, it can actually hit 101 FPS. Okay, the reason why I bring that up is because the 4090 
really seems to be the only card out there that can actually have a leg to stand on when it comes to ray tracing. With DLSS, you're at 100 FPS or higher, and even without DLSS, it's almost capable of hitting 60 FPS in some games. That is definitely a massive improvement for ray tracing compared to previous generations, but it's only on the 4090, which is definitely the most expensive card out there. And so if you're looking at the 4080, the results are definitely nowhere near as impressive. But now the question really comes down to how will AMD perform in ray tracing? And AMD released some official charts and I haven't been able to find the actual source so that I can look at the footnotes of these charts. But looking at videocards.com, I can see here that according to AMD in Cyberpunk, with ray tracing turned on at 4K and FSR turned on, they're able to hit 62 FPS. If we look over to the left at Dian Light 2, we can see the 7900 XTX is capable of averaging 72 FPS with ray tracing turned on and FSR enabled. Now at face value, these numbers don't look too far off from the 4080, but I will be the first person to admit I have no idea if these FSR numbers are using FSR quality or performance or something else. Again, I wasn't really able to track down the actual source of these charts, but I wanna put something in perspective. If you look at the 4080 and the 7900 XTX, which are supposed to be competitors, I think the 7900 XTX has a lot more going for it. Even if you're in the camp of, I need ray tracing, ray tracing is the future. Well, look at the numbers for yourself. Even with the 4080, which is supposed to have better ray tracing capabilities over the 7900 XTX, you're still going to need DLSS support of some kind while using ray tracing on the 4080. And if you're okay with that, then why not go with the 7900 XTX? The 7900 XTX is $200 cheaper. It has FSR capabilities that will allow you to hit similar frame rates while using ray tracing. And we know it's probably going to be faster in terms of overall rasterization. The reason why I kept talking about the 6950 XT earlier is because AMD keeps comparing the 7900 XTX to the 6950 XT. Now, if the 6950 XT is only 30% behind on average when compared to the 4080, but the 7900 XT is supposed to be anywhere between 50 to 70% faster than the 6950 XT, then that means it will be faster than the 4080, assuming AMD wasn't lying or something like that. I do think the 7900 XTX overall is the better buy here. Now the 4080 overall is still a really good card, but it just has a terrible price. If the 4080 was launching at $900 or even $1,000 to match the 7900 XTX, I might be swayed a little bit to say, okay, Maybe, but when the 7900 XTX is cheaper and probably faster at the end of the day, it makes no sense to buy a 4080 at $1,200. Now that's all I got. I'm looking forward to reading your comments, especially if for some reason you're upset by something I said, but I hope we can have a civil conversation down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, please consider subscribing and check this video out over here to the left where I talk more about the 7900 XTX and the 4080 and all that good stuff, AMD versus Nvidia, check that out. But until next time, E-Rock out.